Hi there, and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on viscous deformation and strength of the lithosphere. In lecture four on the topic, we're going to finally get into the strength of the lithosphere, and we're going to do that by basically combining what we know about elastic, plastic, and viscous deformation to talk about how they relate in the strength of the lithosphere. So we've talked about these different types of deformation mechanisms in a series of different video lectures. The question now is, how do we put them together to give us an idea or a sense of the overall rheology and strength of the lithosphere? And what kind of behavior do we expect in different parts of the lithosphere and why? So these aren't really specific questions in this case, but if you want to pause the video for a moment and think about them, we're going to kind of proceed from here to answer some of these questions. So it might not be a bad idea just to, um, to think about things for a moment first before proceeding. All right, so we're going to basically work our way through the strength of the lithosphere in what's commonly called the brace gutze lithosphere um, or the jelly sandwich. There's a number of different names that are used to talk about this kind of lithosphere. And we'll start with things that we know. We basically know that the temperature in the earth increases with depth and we can figure that out a number of different ways um, from surface heat flow or whatever. But we can consider things like this where temperature is plotted in a kind of typical geotherm plot temperature versus depth and you can see temperatures are increasing as you go down. We also know that rocks with a frictional plastic rheology will have a nearly linear increase in strength with depth. And so if we took here differential stress as a representation of rock strength and then increasing depth again, we could see this orange line here that would be our brittle shear strength. The question is, why is that? Maybe you need a moment to think about that um, idea from the previous video lecture set about why the frictional strength of rocks would increase with depth. So go ahead, pause the video if you'd like, and think about that for a moment before you come back. Okay, so why is it? Well, of course, you recall from the previous set of lectures on plasticity that frictional plastic materials will have a dependence um, on the normal stress, which in the lithosphere is going to increase in proportion to your depth. And so as you go deeper into the earth, the frictional strength of rock is simply going to increase linearly, and that's where this line would come from. Now, we also know from the last few video lectures in this set that the viscosity of rock will decrease with increasing temperature. And if the rocks are behaving as a viscous fluid, they're going to get weaker and weaker with depth. And that's shown here in these curved orange lines. There's two different orange lines that are shown. Uh, in the top showing the viscous strength of quartz and below that showing the viscous strength of olivine, just taking a representative mineral for the crust and one for the mantle. The different lines here are, well, first off you can see that the strength is highest at the lowest temperatures and it exponentially falls off as you go to higher and higher temperatures and that happens both in the crust and in the mantle lithosphere. Now, the two different color lines here, or sorry, two different lines here are basically offset as a result of the strain rates um, that are applied in terms of calculating the viscous strength. So you'll remember that the differential stress is equal to the viscosity times two times the strain rate. So if the strain rate is larger, that means the differential stress is also going to be larger, and so that's why there's a pair of lines here that are just for different strain rates. We can also say that we know rock is going to fail 
by the weakest available mechanism. And so that means that in the upper part of the crust, where rocks are much weaker in terms of their brittle strength than they are with their viscous strength, we expect the rocks to fracture and deform in a brittle manner. Whereas if you go deeper and uh, into the sort of mid to lower crust, where the viscous strength of rock is much lower than its brittle strength or its frictional strength, then we would expect the rocks to flow um, in a viscous manner. So we can put this together then and basically make these um, strength envelopes and highlighting here in yellow um, the region of the strong part of the rock. And so you can see up for a slow deformation rate, you've got this initial portion up near the surface where you're at relatively low temperatures where the rock strength increases linearly. That's where it's dominantly brittle. And then at a certain point you cross over to where the viscous strength becomes lower than the frictional strength and there you would expect to see uh, dominantly viscous deformation. Now what's going to happen in this scenario if you increase the deformation rate or the strain rate? Um, how would this distribution of strength uh, look different if you increase the strain rate. So pause the video for a moment, think about that, and come back when you have an idea. All right, well, how would it look different? The biggest difference in this case um, occurs here. So when we go to the more rapid deformation, what that means in effect is that the viscous strength will increase and so the transition from frictional or brittle deformation to ductile or viscous deformation will move to a slightly greater depth. And there are some cases here, like in the uh, uppermost portion of the mantle lithosphere, where we actually see a little bit of an area of frictional or brittle um, mantle lithosphere before transitioning to the viscous deformation that's expected to occur beneath that. So by increasing the strain rates, we can actually, in some cases, transition from viscous to um, brittle uh, deformation in terms of what we would predict. So that's it for our introduction to the strength of the lithosphere. When we come back in the next set of video lectures, we'll continue on and talk about some other features of this brace uh model of the strength of the, lith of the lithosphere. But for now, it's time to take your quiz, and I'll see you for the next video lecture.